Why wait to earn the degree you deserve? You have the experience. You have the knowledge. Now is the time to get the credit for the work you've done and earn the recognition you deserve by starting your comeback at Purdue Global. It's time to earn a degree you'll be proud of. A degree that employers will respect. It's never too late. Never too late to come back stronger and move forward in your career. Start your comeback today at purdueglobal.edu. Purdue's online university for working adults. Shopping for humans is hard. Shopping for your dog is easy, thanks to Bark. Every month, we deliver toys and treats just for your dog. Whether it's fun, plush, or tough toys for heavy chewers, we spoil all the dogs. Subscribe now and get a free upgrade at BarkBox.com slash iHeart. Episode 142, How to Pay Off Debt Faster in 2021. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast. My name is Jen. My name is Jill. And today we are talking about how to speed up your debt payoff, or just start on it in 2021 or whenever you listen to this episode. Mm, Yes. How to really just knuckle down and get this thing gone, baby. Yes. In 2020, you paid off your student loans. I paid mine off in 2017. So I feel like we have enough perspective now that we can talk about this again with like deeper yeah, conviction. Absolutely. Well, and from the standpoint of, yeah, the freedom is amazing. Do what you can mm-hmm. do to get there. Yes. So that is what we're getting into today. But first, our sponsors. Today's episode is brought to you by, drumroll please, <laughs> three secrets for creating a debt payoff plan you'll actually stick to. Does that sound exciting? That sounds lengthy. Yes, it's a lengthy ad. Over at Modern Frugality, my goal this year is to help people stick to their debt-free journey and make it as short as possible. Modern Frugality, for those who don't know, is um, my, Jen's, personal blog and YouTube channel. So I want you to pay off your debt as fast as possible, but I want you to do it in a way that you don't feel suffocated by frugality. So That is my 2021 goal, and I am kicking off that initiative with a free live class this Sunday, January 10th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with three strategies you can implement this week or immediately to create a debt payoff plan that's more than just a New Year's resolution, but is a plan you can sustain. And I don't hear many people talk about it or how important it is, so I'm calling them secrets. It also just sounds cooler. So if you want to learn the three secrets for creating a debt payoff plan you'll actually stick to, head to modernfrugality.com slash training to register. And even if you can't join us live, still register. I'll send the replay the next morning. That's modernfrugality.com slash training. And I will see your face. Well, you'll see my face Sunday. Mm. I probably won't see your face. Sounds fun. (laughs) But I'll, I'll talk to you. Three secrets. Mm. Yes. Mm, juicy. Also brought to you by Going Fast. If you've got the need for speed, this sponsor is for you. Going Fast wants to remind us that while it is exhilarating to feel the wind in our hair, there are some things to consider before you jump on that merry-go-round and start yelling, Faster! Are you buckled in? Are your belongings secure? Are you aware of the risk of injury? Going fast. When you're prepared for it, it's almost always better than going slow. Oh, that is so real. That's made me think of when I was pregnant and I couldn't go on any roller coasters. (laughs) Are you pregnant? Maybe. (laughs) You can't ride. Might you become pregnant? Might you, <laughs> might you become pregnant on the ride? I don't know. It's, that's, that's weird. Like what people say, like, are you pregnant? Nursing? Might you become pregnant? <laughs> it's the for, that's drugs. For medication. That's the roller coasters. Yeah. <laughs> You've got those mixed up in your weird world. 
is a weird world I'm living in over here. It's okay. I'm living in it. Ugh. All right. So let's get into our headlines. The first article that you might find when you Google how to pay off your debt faster is this really great one from Money Under 30. And I love the title for it too. Kick Debt's Butt. How to Get Out of Debt on Your Own. It was just of the articles that you could find on Google was my favorite on the front page. (laughs) Yes, it is a good one. And I think highlights some really helpful components. I will say, this is my own caveat. Ah, this is maybe a problem. (laughs) I might be a little jaded. (laughs) Okay, let's face it. I am. I am a little jaded. This is written from the perspective of a young, single, Caucasian male telling us that anybody (laughs) can make more money and get out of debt quickly. So let's just recognize who's talking and the perspective that it's coming from. And please hear from my mouth that I recognize we are all in a variety of different circumstances in marriages with kids, with various types of debt, with various types of income levels. So while, yes, the principles are fantastic and I really enjoy the motivation that's present in this article, if you do read it, definitely recognize just the context from which it's being written because I think sometimes it can come across as like, oh, what am I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. When you hear people make these intense statements like, everyone should be able to do this. See, I did it. And it's like, well, okay, but there's a variety of factors that are present that made this possible for him to do it so quickly. For sure. Still, all the principles are true, but that's my little caveat for this article. You should take everything you find on the internet with a grain (laughs) of salt. (laughs) Way to bring in big picture, yes. Yeah, that's probably the rule. And if you do that and you have a healthy level of skepticism about everything on the internet, then I think you'll be really pleased with the advice he gives. So the first one on this list is to confront it. So how much debt do you have? And this one kind of hit home because before I was paying off debt, I avoided looking at my student loan balance. I avoided my debt. And when I had credit cards, I would avoid looking at it and just set up the minimum payment on auto pay. So confronting it seems so small, but in order to gain the initial momentum, initial speed needed to pay off debt, it is so necessary to take that like big, scary step and get it out all Mm -hmm. on the table. Yeah. And it seems like, well, yeah, obviously you have to know this to move forward. But I do think that this is the biggest barrier to entry for most people Mm -hmm. is what are we even looking at? But I also have heard, and in our, what, nearly three years of doing this together, Jen, anybody who has shared a debt payoff story with us, they did describe a fear and anxiety and overwhelm to looking at the numbers. However, without fail, Everybody describes that once they looked at the numbers, it provided motivation of, okay, now what do I got to do to solve this problem? Mm -hmm. Once looked at, it no longer held that mystery and anxiety. It just allowed for steps to be taken. So recognize that the fear and anxiety that you might experience about confronting it will immediately go away once you confront it. Yeah, Those are just emotions that you deal with. Anxiety is going to be present of like, okay, this is a lot. But typically, it provides you with the motion that you need to then respond and take action. Absolutely. The next thing on this list that would need to happen is to change the behaviors that got you there. Another somewhat obvious one, but to recognize that just saying, okay, I'm going to get out of debt is one thing, but we also need to look at what were the propelling factors that got me in this position? For him, for the author of this article, he was in consumer debt. 
So he certainly had to take a hard look at his own spending and change that. So I know for a lot of us, it might have been student loan debt. And he does address that. And I did appreciate this. I did as well. You know, you'll hear this of change the behaviors that got you there. It's like, well, it's school debt. So what am I going to do about that? Well, it's a real reality that a lot of us consider going back to school. So recognizing this is weighty. Yep, you might have gotten yourself into debt to get a degree, and it might ultimately pan out and be worth it. But before you look at getting that master's or sinking another 100K into a PhD, don't. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's look at paying off our debt first. Not don't do it, but just like, let's think of ways to cash flow. Like, Jill, you cash flowed mm-hmm. your master's before yes. your bachelor's was paid off. And it's interesting, and I'm realizing some of the value of that too. And I think I've always approached this as a, well, that's me. And that still is the case. Not everybody's circumstances are going to be my circumstances, but I'm starting to see that there is a bit of a key in that that I think is replicable of taking it that seriously. Mm -hmm. If debt feels that overwhelming, and if the amount of debt you're in, even if for school loans, is massive then the steps we need to take to recover from that are quite massive. And so I did take some drastic and maybe extreme steps to be able to get my master's degree without going into more debt. I think that's how intensive I was about it. I knew that I wanted my master's and I knew I wanted to get it within a certain amount of time. But I also knew, no way, no how am I going to do this by acquiring more debt? Mm -hmm. And I do think that there are ways, if we're willing to do some extreme things, to kind of commit to that of here's the debt level that I do have, but I am committed to not getting into further debt. For me, the extreme thing was moving into a motorhome, really cutting our living expenses, which for most of us is where most of our paychecks go. Most people spend about 20 to 30% of their income on housing. And so we cut that to the bare minimum, and it is what allowed me to not go into further debt for my master's degree. So I know that that's not everybody's circumstance, but I think this is an incredible point that even if it is school debt, we can look at changing those behaviors so that we don't acquire more debt in the process. Yeah, and it forces you to get creative, to think outside the box. And maybe you do have to take out a little bit of school debt, but way less than if you had just taken the easy road and signed on the dotted line for all of them. So we're not saying that there is one way to do it, but there is more than one way to do it. The third is to earn enough to get out of debt. So this is kind of the one that I see the most is like when I ask people what would make it easier for you to pay off debt, like what would be the most beneficial? Like literally the first answer is always more money. So (laughs) it's not always a saving money problem. Sometimes there is an income issue that you have to address in order to be able to pay off debt faster. For us, when we started paying off our debt, my husband, Travis, was unemployed. We had just gotten married, so we'd spent all of our savings on our wedding which was still very affordable, but we didn't have a lot of savings. And I was only able to get 25 hours a week at my full-time job. Like that's max amount I could get. So we had an income problem and we did everything we could to raise our income. And so long story short, that eventually led me to stress out, get shingles and realize I also had to couple that with saving money. But it is very often that earning more income is the fastest route to getting out of debt. This was such a mindset shift for me that I'm so grateful for. And I really do think doing this podcast for me personally has helped in that mindset shift. I think I previously had this idea of, well, I'm just kind of capped or this is the profession that I've chosen and I'm not super money motivated. And so I thought, this is what I make as a social worker. So this is just what I need to become accustomed to. And I think I started to see permission in saying, no, actually, as I gain in my skill set and knowledge and wisdom and financial goals, I am able to find ways to earn more, whether that is within my profession or getting side hustles or raises or you name it. I think 
sometimes, not for everybody, but I was definitely in the pool of this never totally occurred to me. I kind of imagined that as I went throughout the decades of life, I might start to make a little more, but I never had my sights on actually aiming at that and finding ways to make more. So Mm -hmm. I just want to encourage people who might find themselves in that position that there is freedom and permission to figure out what do I need to do? There is a bit of a mindset shift necessary, whether that's get a second job, negotiate raises, find work that does pay you more. There is permission to do this. We don't just have to resign ourselves to the way life currently looks. Absolutely. So from there, we want to start talking about tools. So those are the the three tips that this article gives on kind of what we need to do to kind of really buckle down. And now, now we want to jump into, all right, what are some of the hammers and screwdrivers that we would mm-hmm. use to make this possible? So one of the things that he recommends is utilizing balance transfers. So we're talking about credit cards with this, that there are oftentimes credit card companies who will offer a balance transfer, aka transferring over the debt that you owe to another credit card with a 0% APR. So he gives the example of, let's say you've got a balance of two grand on one credit card with 15% APR, and you're able to transfer that to 0% APR for 12 months, you could save up to $300 in interest now it is important to recognize the pitfalls. Certainly for those who don't have credit card debt, then this is not useful information. But for those who do, recognize some of the pitfalls in this, that you still need to be able to pay off the money. Ultimately, I think this just buys you more time, which is great. But there can also be the element of carrying a credit card might be temptation. So we definitely need to make sure that we're not spending more, that the credit card continues to be paid off at intensive rates wherever possible. But it can be useful just for buying you more time and cutting out some of that interest. And ultimately, only save about $300 in interest in this example. So the amount of interest you save is not life-changing, but it does help if you're trying to pay off your debt faster and you're already committed. But Sometimes it can be a little hard to qualify for these for the good balance transfer cards. You oftentimes need excellent credit. There's only a few for people with good credit. So it doesn't actually help the people that it's probably trying to help unless you do have excellent credit and then this is something you can utilize. So the second one is debt consolidation loans. It's becoming a lot easier to find unsecured personal loans made for paying off debt. And so this is one of the things that he used. So he said he had too much debt to get new credit cards and the balance transfers wouldn't work for him because of the transfer would, he would just spend again on the old credit card. That was his habit. So that is a very common habit. So balance transfer credit cards are definitely not my favorite. So the author consolidated his credit card debt with a personal loan because personal loans, often the average interest rate is about half, less than half maybe, of what a credit card interest rate would be. So if you have a lot of high interest loan debt that it's going to take you possibly multiple years to pay off, then this would be a good option. If you're going to be able to pay off your credit card debt within like six months or around there, I don't think you should bother with either. I think you should just pay it off because doing a hard credit inquiry and getting the loan, it's all just extra stuff onto your credit, lowers your credit history length, all this stuff. So it's just not worth it. But if you have debt that can be consolidated and and it's going to take you multiple years to pay that off, this could be something to look Mm -hmm. into. The next thing he mentions is credit counseling and debt management. Certainly, we're talking about some more extreme cases where it will take you what looks to be many, many years to pay off debt or kind of what's seemingly insurmountable amounts of debt when you look at your debt-to-income ratio. And so this could be an option. And 
The benefit of going this route is that you can work with third-party companies who are experts at negotiating and lowering interest rates and helping you figure out where you might be able to consolidate. However, beware. There are debt settlement scams out there, and while the government has crack down a little bit on this, you definitely need to be wise and prudent about this. There's a couple of organizations out there that are listed. The National Foundation for Credit Counseling is a nonprofit organization that is reputable. They provide credit counselors. There's also another reputable organization called Accredited Debt Relief. I'll link to both those in our show notes if this feels like potentially the route that you need to take. But Ultimately, these are organizations who will assist to work towards some negotiation and figuring out payment plans for you if you need some of that extra help. I would recommend that you try to do, like, figure out a plan on your own. Try to see what is possible for you. But if you are finding, okay, I have already set my hands to that and it's not working, this then would be the next step. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. So how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing. And of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, Take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash strategic. That's oracle.com slash strategic. oracle.com slash strategic. Hi, I'm Martine Hackett, and I'm hosting the second season of Untold Stories, Life with a Severe Autoimmune Condition, a production from Ruby Studio in partnership with Argenix. Sharing real stories of MG, CIDP, and other autoimmune conditions, we hope to share inspiration and educate the larger community about these severe and often overlooked conditions. I can't fix this. I can't cure this. And, you know, I'll take my treatment day by day, but I want to try to be engaged, be involved, or be as helpful as I feel I can with the limitations I have of working full time to children. So I participate in like market research to provide information to hopefully benefit others because it's a small margin of people that have the mycenae, but then to get pregnant, it's an even more narrow margin. And you can't ever have too much information as an epidemiologist. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> Listen to Untold Stories, Life with a Severe Autoimmune Condition on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. So we will move on to our next article, and it is from Every Dollar, one of favorite budgeting apps. And it is how to pay off debt faster than ever. And it's got an encouraging little picture that says, you can do it. <laughs> I love encouragement. But yeah, what did you think of this one, Jill? This was, I guess, my second favorite article in Google on this. It seemed it seemed practical. Yeah. It is the basics. This is ultimately what Ramsey Solutions, the way that they recommend going about paying off debt, which is a lot of our gateway. <laughs> into the financial freedom world is the concepts that that they put at, put forth. So I think a lot of it is really great reminders, but in a really simplified format that is, I don't want to say foolproof, but you follow this pathway and you can become debt-free. The Mm -hmm. length of time that it takes will vary person to person. But I do think that if it's like, well, where where do I start? What do I do? Here it is. Here's a pathway forward. Do these Mm -hmm. things. You will be debt-free. And I feel like these steps are a little easier to digest than maybe what we normally hear from Dave. So the first one is write down all your debt. We heard that in the last article. But I think it just bears repeating that 
transparency is key to health, to being healthy with relationship, with finances, with everything, to be open and honest about that with yourself. You don't have to broadcast it, but you need to be open and honest about where you're at Mm. with yourself. Yeah. And the next one, oh boy, you all are going to love hearing this because it's always coming out of my mouth. (laughs) Number two, make a budget. Yes. There's no way around this. Like the Yeah. And especially when you're in the debt payoff phase and you really want to just get serious about this, you have got to make a budget. There's all different kinds of ways to make a budget. There's different ways of approaching it. So find what works for you, but you do need to know what you're spending, how much you have to spend so that you can rein it in as much as possible and put as many dollars and cents towards your debt as possible. Yeah. And hopefully you caught our last episode last week on minimalist budgeting. There is a reason that our minimalist budgeting episode is still one of our most popular episodes because you know you need to make a budget, but it is difficult to stick to one. And so finding a way to budget that fits with your lifestyle is important, but also changing your lifestyle to fit with regularly tracking and sticking to your budget is equally important. So put equal weight on both of those things. The next is to save a thousand dollar safety net against debt. So I like that this said safety net in this one, because typically when we think of Dave Ramsey, we think of the thousand dollar emergency fund. And for people on a variable income, the emergency fund, especially at $1,000, can seem very low. And so a lot of people will save a bigger emergency fund. But so what we did is we had our $1,000 emergency fund, but we also had a quote unquote safety net in our regular checking account for expenses that we were not anticipating so that we would not have to put money onto a credit card because we were making such large debt payments so frequently that our budget was always zero-based. So I really like the idea of, in addition to having an emergency fund, and I know that's not what the article is saying, but I like the idea of also having a little extra safety net for those, almost like a sinking fund, but for irregular expenses that are maybe are too big to be caught by your miscellaneous fund, but you can anticipate, so they're not emergencies. So just having a safety net against debt that's somewhere in the middle of emergency and miscellaneous, I think is a really good way to protect yourself against debt, also to protect your mind against the discouragement that you feel if you have to go into your emergency fund or if you break your budget. It can protect you against that, and that in itself will keep your momentum going so you don't slow down. Nice. The fourth thing on this list is to create a debt payoff plan. So once you've done those first three steps, now it's time to consider how am I going to do this? What's the methodical way in which I'm going to approach this debt? And there are some key components to this. Certainly, you want to look back at your budget and find ways to tighten up your spending, meaning cut out the extras, get rid of subscriptions, cut back on maybe your eating out and entertainment spending. You you know where your money goes if you've budgeted and you've started to look at your spending and track your spending. So then figure out where might I be overspending or spending more than what I need to and cut that out so that you can free up more money to put towards debt forever. (laughs) Oh, that feels so good to say. And then figure out, okay, what's the method that I want to use? Of course, they recommend the snowball method where you find your smallest debt. You make payments on that smallest debt. And then once that's paid off, you put what you had been paying towards that debt towards the next smallest debt while you're also making payments on those. So eventually the idea is that the amount of money that you're able to put towards debt as each one gets paid off is bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Certainly look up the debt snowball method if this is not familiar to you, but 
it can be a really effective method. It's not the only method, but certainly can be quite useful if you've got a lot of different loans or debts that you're not quite sure how to tackle. I certainly think interest rates come into play. How much in interest you're paying to each one, that could factor into the timing in which you seek to pay off different loans. Yeah. We personally used a combination of the debt snowball and the interest-based plan, the debt avalanche, where the debt snowball is psychologically keeps momentum going faster. And so that is kind of what we're talking about here. If you want to go faster and further, then the debt snowball psychologically is a better option. If you want to save more money and you're not motivated by quick wins and other psychological tricks, then the debt avalanche is for you. But we used a combination because my interest rates for my student loan were double what Travis's were, but my debt was also double the size. So because there were smaller loans in each of our student loans, we were able to start with mine and then snowball the smaller loans within it. So we still got those psychological quick wins with the advantage of saving some on our interest rate. And then when that was done, then we went to Travis's and did the same thing within his loans. So you should make it what you want. You should make it what works for you. But knowing that just because the debt avalanche may save you a couple hundred bucks doesn't always mean it's the best route. I mean, the best math answer isn't always the right answer Mm. for life. Yeah. Mm, Well said. So the fifth one is to never go back to debt which I think is important, but I think it's also important to be flexible on this. So knowing a lot of people who have paid off debt, being in this industry, I think everybody has their debt-free story. And I know a lot of people. And getting to the end of your debt-free journey is not just financially changing, it is life-changing. And once you get out of debt once, then you are motivated to not go back. You are armed with information you didn't have before, wisdom and a lifestyle you didn't have before. And you are much less prone to the lifestyle that got you into debt. And so if for some reason you are debt-free and something happens where debt may be the path of least resistance, then I don't see it as a horrible thing to maybe take out a car loan to keep up your retirement investing rate or to take out a small personal loan if you have medical bills that otherwise would go on a credit card. So you will have more wisdom and knowledge about that to discern the right answer once you are out of debt. But you don't really get that wisdom until after you complete the journey. Mm -hmm. I became debt-free and then we bought a house. (laughs) So yeah, yeah, technically I'm in debt, but Mm -hmm. It made sense for us Mm -hmm. based on what our living situation was and not putting money towards a rental situation, but putting money towards our home. So, yeah, yes, there is freedom. You've heard us say this before. There (laughs) is freedom in this frugal journey to figure out what works for you. But ultimately, there is great freedom in becoming Mm debt-free, especially in the way that makes most sense for you. And with that, number six, this is my favorite. My favorite, too. And I love that it's on here, and I love the permission it provides. Celebrate every win along the way. Yes. So we're not just talking about waiting until the day that you become debt-free to pull out the kazoos. We are talking about celebration along the way at every small or even large win in your journey to debt freedom. So while this definitely does not mean spending thousands of dollars on a nice vacation after paying off a thousand dollar loan, (laughs) this does mean treating yourself in small ways. They give examples of getting a nice coffee drink or doing a pizza night with the family or you name it, small things that you know you enjoy to give yourself that space to recognize the accomplishment, the work that it took, the intentionality that it took, sometimes even the sacrifice. Again, it helps to feed motivation. It helps us to feel accomplished and to recognize that there are even small things that we're working towards in this journey, not just 
the final end goal. Little small steps and small wins are worth celebrating. Yeah. I think when you're first starting out, if your loans aren't set up in the snowball to give you a win every month or two, then make your own milestones to give yourself those quick wins sooner. So it's different based on everybody's income and amount of debt and how the debt is distributed across loans. So kind of try to reverse engineer what your debt payoff plan is and figure out what your milestones should be to get you a win every one to two months for maybe the first six months and then beyond that every two to four months. It's very important to celebrate accomplishments along the way. We are so good at remembering when we mess up, when life hits us, when we bust our budget. We are so good at remembering those things and we are not as good at realizing the progress that we made and patting ourselves on the back for our accomplishments. Mm -hmm. Do you know what is an amazing weekly celebration? Oh my gosh. I am always patting myself on the back for these people's accomplishments. (laughs) It's the Bill of the Week. That's right. It's time for the best minute of your entire week. Maybe a baby was born and his name is William. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe your car died and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore. Duck bills, buffalo bills, Bill Clinton, this is the Bill of the Week. Hi, Frugal Friends. I love listening to your podcast. I am Brittany, and my Bill of the Week is I was able to pay my entire six months insurance up front. So it saved me 20 months overall and like five bucks a month. They would have charged for like a bill fee. So I paid it all at once. I saved that money. Thanks. Yes, Brittany. I love that. That's a double win because I think not only is it all covered, did you have the money to pay it all up front, Mm -hmm. but then you also save money for being able to pay it all up front. Many insurance companies do give these incentives for paying in lump sums. And I think it's incredible when we're able to do that. Awesome bill, Brittany. Yes. I think it's unfortunate that companies reward people with money instead of helping people without, but (laughs) it is a way to save money. So sometimes you have to play the game in order to to win. (laughs) And you have done that, Brittany, Mm -hmm. and I am proud of you. Well done. If you want to submit your bill of the week, whether it has to do with a bill that you paid off in full or saved money on, or you know the drill, even just a person named Bill, visit frugalfriendspodcast.com slash bill. Leave us what you got. Hi, I'm Martine Hackett, and I'm hosting the second season of Untold Stories, Life with a Severe Autoimmune Condition, a production from Ruby Studio in partnership with Argenix. Sharing real stories of MG, CIDP, and other autoimmune conditions, we hope to share inspiration and educate the larger community about these severe and often overlooked conditions. I can't fix this. I can't cure this. And, you know, I'll take my treatment day by day, but I want to try to be engaged, be involved, or be as helpful as I feel I can with the limitations I have of working full time to children. So I participate in like market research to provide information to hopefully benefit others because it's a small margin of people that have the myasthenia, but then to get pregnant, it's an even more narrow margin. And you can't ever have too much information as an epidemiologist. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> Listen to Untold Stories, Life with a Severe Autoimmune Condition on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Shopping for humans is hard. Shopping for your dog is easy, thanks to Bark. Every month, we deliver toys and treats just for your dog. They deserve to be spoiled anyway. At Bark, we send your dog a whole new collection of toys and treats made just for them every single month. Whether it's our fun plush toys from BarkBox or our ultra-tough toys from Super Chewer. We give your dog exactly what they want. For a limited time, we'll double your first box for free. To get your free upgrade, go to BarkBox.com iHeart. 
Mm. Yes. And now it's time for the lightning, the lightning round. round. Pew, 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 pew. Pew. All right. Today we are sharing what's the one thing no one told you about paying off debt. Mm. So one thing you couldn't find on Google. <laughs> so yeah, go for it. I will go first because this is my question. My friendships changed. So I realized I wouldn't be able to go out with my friends as much. But I did not realize that my friends would still want to go out without me. So on the weekends, they were still living their lives. They did not want to pay off debt with me. And I was at home without friends. So that was pretty isolating. But I didn't let that keep going for our debt payoff journey. I found new friends that wanted to hang out at home, play games, watch movies, go to free things in the park. So my friendships changed during that season. And a lot of my friends from before, we're still friends now. I didn't lose friends, but I did gain some really great relationships and memories that I would not have if I had not been through that Mm. season. Yeah, I do appreciate you talking about this quite often, not all the time, obviously, but (laughs) on the podcast, because I don't think many people do address this, of some of the ways that it shifts our lifestyle, which impacts other aspects of our personhood, definitely relationships. And that's definitely not a reason to not pay off debt, but it does impact all aspects of who we are. And particularly if we're looking at ways to not get into more debt, if a lot of the reason for our being in debt or not, or having trouble saving is because of what we choose to do with social events and gatherings, then yeah, we're going to have to make some Mm -hmm. shifts, which will inevitably impact relationships. So it's not talked about often and there are ways to still care for ourselves relationally in that. But yes. yeah, it is a good thing to <laughs> speak about and make people aware of. So thank you. You're welcome. How about you, Jill? I think for me, I never heard from people that I could pay off debt. <laughs> I know that it sounds so <laughs> silly, but I don't even totally remember where my desire to pay off debt originated, but in the community and environment that I was in, this isn't something that people were doing or talking about doing. I think I did take a Financial Peace University course, my husband and I, shortly after we got married, and I think that that's partly what sparked my interest in this, but certainly No one said that it would be possible to do before the projected dates of payoff. You know, with the Mm -hmm. amount of debt that I had and the income that I was making and the minimum payments that my debt required, it would have taken me 30 years if I did the bare minimum to pay off my debt. I didn't have a massive amount of debt. It was just the fact that, like, they were only requiring because my income was so low, like, around $100 a month. So it would have taken very, very long. So I think I just never really heard from anybody, this is a worthwhile goal and you can do it even though you don't make a lot of money. And I think once I decided for myself that this is something I want to do and I think I'm going to try whatever I can to do it despite my low income, I'm so glad I did. Holy smokes. Yeah. Not just taking the path of least resistance of paying the minimum and having this thing looming over me for decades. There's a lot of changes that needed to come into place, but I just didn't have a community that was even had their sights on this. I know. It's super common. There was no one trying to pay off their debt when we were paying off our debt. And I think a lot of people feel isolated by it. And I think another thing is that people will will say like, okay, I'll start paying off my debt once I get this raise, or I'll start paying off my debt once I get this other job, or once I move, yada, yada. But there is no good time to start paying off debt. If you start from a good place, you're inevitably going to have something happen to you that's going to like bring you down, and then you're just going to feel discouraged, and you're going to stop. The best is to start at the way, way bottom, because you can't go down from there. <laughs> like when we, I was underemployed, Travis was unemployed, like literally there was no worse place we could have been at to start paying off debt. 
And we didn't realize this at the time, <laughs> but I'm glad we didn't realize this. But yeah, it just made every accomplishment feel like that much more mm-hmm. of a win. Yeah. What we did hear from people is, oh, that's good debt. <laughs> you know, my debt was mm-hmm. student loans or, oh, it's not a ton of debt or you know, there's plenty of things you do hear when you're in this journey, but yeah, there's a lot that you don't hear as well. I never would have thought I could pay off the debt in the amount of time that we paid it off. And that just kind of came as a surprise as life happened. You know, I was kind of just like, as soon as we can, but recognizing it was probably going to take about 10 years. And I think all said and done, really, it was maybe six years, which I'm so grateful for. Yeah. And literally right before the pandemic. Yeah. Hit the fan Mm -hmm. in 2020. Great timing. Yeah. We became debt-free in February, 2020. I think I've mentioned that on another podcast episode. Holy smokes. I didn't even know what was coming, but because we had been diligent prior to, we didn't have to worry about those debt payments. Mm -hmm. And it did free up some money for us. Absolutely. Yep. Oh, man. Thank you guys so much for listening. And I hope that we can bring you another really solid year of helpful podcast episodes. Every year that we do this, we feel more and more encouraged by how much this has helped you. And so this is what we're here for. We're here to only bring you stuff that either helps you or makes you laugh. And If it doesn't do one of those two things, you probably won't hear it on this podcast. So thank you for listening. Thank you for your kind reviews that let us know what is most helpful so that we can do more of it. Like this one, it's from Alicia K. 80, and it just happens to be five stars. She says, my soul sisters, who dis? These two are my sisters from other misters. I recently stumbled across this podcast while looking for frugal tip podcasts to listen to while door dashing my side hustle. My husband and I recently started our journey in August to pay off our $58,000 in debt. I live outside Philly, so I love listening to Jill talk about when she lived up north outside of Philly, and her voice and laugh always make me smile. I feel like I could sit and look through missed connections on Craigslist with Jen for hours. Either way, These two keep me laughing the entire time I am listening. I get to learn lots of new tips and ideas while enjoying their banter. Kudos to you guys for keeping us entertained while giving advice. Keep these episodes coming. Mm. We will. This is a fun (laughs) review. Referencing inside jokes even. Who dis? Oh my gosh. Was a bill of the week (laughs) phone call that came in to us probably accidentally and has become our big joke. (laughs) Uh, And also, I love that you love how much I hate Philly. That's great. That's great for all of us. (laughs) Yes. So we also want to thank our friends who share these episodes on social media. When you share the latest episode and tag us on Facebook or Instagram, we're adding you to our monthly drawing. So for every five tags and reviews we get each month, we're giving away a copy of the Frugal Friends Workbook. So keep leaving us reviews on iTunes or Stitcher and sending those screenshots to frugalfriendspodcast at gmail.com. Don't forget to tag us on social and don't forget to head to modernfrugality.com slash training to enter in to the lovely training that we've got going on this Sunday. It's going to be real fun. It's going to be a lot of frugal friends and I'm stoked on it. I'm just stoked. Mm. See you next week. Frugal Friends is produced by Eric Siriani. So in addition to this live training on Sunday, I wanted to leave this till the after show (laughs) because this is, this is exclusive. (laughs) Secret, secret. Yeah, secret, secret. So My new course, Financial Freedom Fast Track, is open for the next seven days. Mm. It is something I've been working on for months and months. Yeah. And it is literally all about how to set up the foundations for your debt payoff to sustain the journey, get it done faster, and then also what comes next. Mm Because I feel like I was super lost Mm -hmm. when we got to the end of our debt payoff 
And there was some advice, but there wasn't advice for that bridge, for those Mm -hmm. like several months of that bridge from debt to debt freedom. And so I am super, super excited to share that with the world. It is my second baby. Mm. You're doing so much in January. Mm -hmm. You're doing live calls and free things. Yeah, it's so much. People can have so much access to tips through you. This is the time when people care most about their finances. Mm. And so I am here for it. So true, so true. I am here. I'm here for you and all of it. And so if anybody wants to check out the Financial Freedom Fast Track before people that enter the live training get access to it, you can check it out at modernfrugality.com slash fast track. I'm super proud of what's in it. I'm super, super <laughs> excited to enter into this journey with people for, for a month. That's cool, Joan. Even more access to me, like four weekly coaching calls and off Facebook mm. community group. We're going to have a lot of time you together. Just need so much more from Jen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you're not sick of me already, I'm going to be here for you more. If you want more of me, I'm here for it. I'm very excited. Mm, Me too. Okay, bye.